let's look at some examples of a man-in-the-middle attack. The first requires a program called DSNF. Now, DSNF is technically a collection of many different types of utilities that a hacker can use to hijack or take over your session to be a man in the middle, basically interpreting your code for the server and vice versa. Now, DSNF just sets up the capability of performing a man in the middle attack. Now, let's take a look at one of the first types, the most common, really, of man in the middle attacks. That's exploiting HTTPS, or the Hypertext Transport Protocol Secure essentially the secure socket layer session that allows you to have authenticated and encrypted web traffic with another system. Again, man-in-the-middle attacks will allow you to create this encrypted and authenticated session, but to them. They'll turn around and create another encrypted session to the actual destination server, but in between, they get the raw, pure, unencrypted data. The other type of attack, which is a little bit more rare, it's a little bit easier to spot, but it has potentially greater devastating consequences, is that of performing a man-in-the-middle attack against an SSH session. SSH, or Secure Shell, is an authenticated and encrypted remote administration command line utility, similar to Telnet, but much more secure. Again, imagine the possibilities if I am able to interrupt an administrator session to a remote machine. Me playing the part of the attacker could intercept this communication and get the administrative password to that destination server, which actually, in reality, would probably translate to me gaining remote administrative control of your entire network. Fortunately, SSH provides me a warning message that I can obey, ideally, and discontinue my session, starting to log and be much more cautious knowing that I'm being targeted.